This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and today we're going to look at the U.S. version of the HTC One Mini 2. God, what a name that was, right? Anyway, this is the HTC One Remix. Really the same phone, but for Verizon Wireless in the United States. 4.5 inch IPS, well, Super LCD 2 display, actually. Good pixel density here. Snapdragon 400 for moderate performance, but you get that HTC One kind of look right here. The whole unibody design, the metal look. So classier than your average mid-range mini version of a phone. We're going to look at it now. So this is the HTC One Remix. Uh, interesting name there. I think it's better than HTC One Mini 2. What kind of name was that? My word. Anyway, Android phone here, obviously Android 4.4 KitKat with HTC Sense 6 UI. So software-wise, you're looking at the same thing as its big brother, the HTC One M8. However, smaller design. This is a 4.5-inch display, 1280 by 720. Now, yeah, that's, that's 720p, but don't go boohoo because it's a smaller screen. So therefore, you're still looking at 326 ppi pixel density. That's the same as the iPhone 5S, so it's no slouch. Again, the Super LCD 2 here that HTC likes to use. Pretty good viewing angles. It'll just go far enough off angle. It'll disappear a little bit. But overall, pretty, pretty good display here. Bright, a little on the cool side. Certainly sharp enough. And notice the big top and bottom areas. HTC Boom Sound speakers top and bottom. So just like the big M8 model, you get stereo speakers here. And it's remarkably loud. The first time that we played some video on here is like very clear okay this is definitely boom sound back at you so for those of you who really care about the built-in speaker sound that's certainly a selling point over competitors like say the moto x the big old lg vista that's the latest big fabletish mid-range price phone on verizon you get the idea five megapixel camera up front just like the HTC One M8, you get a lot of megapixels there, and it can record 1080p video, backside illuminated sensor there. It's quite good. So for those of you who video chat a lot or are really into selfies, you're probably going to really enjoy that. And if we take a look at the back, well, it looks just like the One. So it is just a smaller version of the One, and we've got this nice silvery kind of finish here. It's a satin finish, and it's grippy. It's not slippery like some of the One M8 finishes that we've seen. That's a good thing. Obviously on Verizon, we had big Verizon branding there, and 13 megapixel camera here. Traditional, no no interesting duo camera like on the M8, no ultra pixel super size sensors here. Just a straightforward 13 megapixel camera. Now, it does have a backside illuminated sensor, an f2.2 lens, which is pretty quick. HDR mode can also record 1080p video, so right up there with the other mid-range phones on the market in terms of specs. Obviously, we've got our LED flash right there. Single color flash, no dual color one. Unibody metal design, a little bit more like the HTC One original version, or the M7, rather than the M8. This one is about 70% metal, whereas the M8 tried to go up into the 90s with it being almost completely metal. So that means you see a little of the polycarbonate sandwiched here. And as we look on the edges, you see the contrasting white polycarbonate. Not only to bring down the cost of this phone, but also, well, probably helps with the antenna reception too. The smaller the phone, the less room they have to wind antennas around on this. And this end here, you can see more polycarbonate. It's still a very good looking phone. I mean, the HTC One M7 that had the sandwich of polycarbonate was a good looking phone too. It's not quite as frou-frou and chic with the chamfered metal edges as the M8 is, but then this one is cheaper on contract too. Obviously, that's our micro USB port down here at the bottom. On this side, we have our volume controls. Now, you've got two little doors here, and one of these doors is for micro SD card slots. So, yes, expandable storage. Good times. And on the other side, we also have our micro or nano SIM slot, rather. So, you've got two different slots. You've got to remember which is which because it's really inconvenient when you pull out your SIM card and accidentally, well, kill your wireless service until you stick it back in there. Up top again, headphone jack, 3.5 millimeter standard, and the power button. HTC likes to put it up top, which can be a bit of a handful on a bigger phone. Now, because this is the mini, it's supposed to be easier. I have pretty darn big hands, so I can do it, but I still really wouldn't mind if they moved it over to the side. To compare it to the M8, which we have sitting right here, we have the Sprint Music Edition version of it, so this one's a kind of black look. The size difference is not huge, is it? That's the interesting thing. Going between the 4.5 and, and the 5 inch model here, for a mini phone, it's not real super duper mini. It's 4.83 ounces, so it's a little heavier than the average mm, mini size phone, or 4.5 inch size phone. 
If we look at the front of these guys and you can see the same aesthetic, the same design, there's just a lot more metal going on here on the edges for this one. And to compare it to another affordable phone with similar specs inside, although not available on Verizon Wireless yet, but this is the Moto G. So you can see it's a little bit smaller. They both have 720p screens. Now for you folks on Verizon, the more interesting thing would be comparing this to the Moto X. If budget is your priority and getting the recent version of Android and a clean UI, the Moto X is an obvious competitor to this. And the Moto X is cheaper right now. It's actually free with a two-year contract on Verizon Wireless, and it's $399 full retail versus $450 for this one full retail. What you won't be getting on the Moto X is the nice metal build quality. Yes, you can get customizable colors and backs and all that sort of thing, which is pretty nice too, but for those of you who are looking for that kind of metal, feels good in the hand, high quality thing, well, that's who HTC is looking at, the people who want that sort of thing. And for a little size comparison, what's behind here is the Samsung Galaxy S5. Really, so not much difference right there in terms of size. It's quite surprising, actually. So we have the 5.1 inch Samsung Galaxy S5 and the HTC One Remix over here. So in the end, I think that the Remix is going to be for those of you, again, who want that kind of quality HTC design and want to save some money. Maybe you're not into that ultra pixel camera. You can care less about the dual camera with depth sensing that goes with the HTC One M8. You just want a solid Android phone with decent performance. Speaking of performance, we have the Qualcomm Snapdragon 400 in here. That's the quad-core version, the MSM8926 for you geekier people who follow the processor numbers. Clocked at 1.2 gigahertz Adreno 305 graphics in here. This has 16 gigs of storage, so that's a nice thing. Often with these mid-rangey kind of phones and mini phones, you get less storage. You've got full 16 gigs here, around 10 gigs available for your use, and obviously expandable via that micro SD card slot. It has 1.5 gigs of RAM inside. Not one, not two, but 1.5. Dual band Wi-Fi, 802.11n, not AC, Bluetooth 4.0, GPS with GLONASS, and NFC. One thing that I noticed about the GPS, and is this the curse of the metal body phones? Maybe it is. I don't know. But when I turned off Wi-Fi, which gets used for location triangulation, even if you're not actually connected to an access point, I noticed it would often be off by a couple of blocks as to where my location was. And then I enabled Wi-Fi, even though I wasn't, again, connected to a hotspot. You could be out at your local Best Buy or something like that, and Walmart with no Wi-Fi service available to you. It would then locate correctly. Service on this, in terms of cellular reception, I find that it's a bit below the other Verizon phones we've looked at lately. The, the, now, the Nokia Lumia Icon, Nokia phones just have awesome reception. That one manages about two bars of LTE in our area. Now, our area doesn't have the superest of Verizon LTE coverage. In fact, the tower kind of went on the fritz lately in our area, but still. The LG Vista also managed two bars of LTE. Our HTC One Remix dropped down to 3G. It could not manage to hold on to that LTE signal. So if you live in a strong Verizon wireless coverage area, well, that might not much matter to you. But if you live in, a, in an area that has some dubious LTE coverage, be sure to, well, check out your signal thoroughly. If you bring it home, Verizon gives you 14 days to check out the phone before you have to return it. Make sure that you've got the coverage that you need from the phone in terms of data speed. Voice quality on this phone, quite good. HTC generally does a good job with voice quality on this, and no exception here. Good loud earpiece. Outgoing voice sounded pretty clear, slightly, ever so slightly digitized, but nothing I would really complain about. Very intelligible conversations on the phone. So as a voice phone, it works just fine. Now our LTE speeds, when we were near a tower, now that, that's an amazing number right there. Those two top numbers, very impressive. So if you're very close to a, a tower and it's not too congested, you can get really good data speeds on this. And the other speeds, as you might guess, were on 3G, EVDO Rev A 3G. The battery on this guy is, well, surprise, not really. It's a unibody design. It is sealed inside, 2100 milliamps. That's not a bad battery capacity for something with a 720p display and the Snapdragon 400 processor, which is much less demanding than the 800 or 801 processor. So we had no problems getting through a full day, and that's with pretty heavy use, too. Sh shooting a lot of pictures on this, shooting some video, playing some YouTube videos in HD size, and even playing a game for about 20 minutes or so, Asphalt 8, which actually runs pretty fine on here, despite the fact it's got a Snapdragon 400, which isn't the most cutting edge. Now, in terms of benchmark numbers, our phone here managed quadrant score of 9479. Uh, you'll see these scores are going to be about half of the Snapdragon 800, but then again, you know, 
phone CPUs are so darn powerful these days, it's just kind of psycho. So a lot of people really don't need that. If you're a real hardcore gamer and you play the latest 3D games, you're going to want the fastest processor you can get. Uh, beyond that, generally speaking, Snapdragon 400 is perfectly adequate. On Tutu, 17,668. 3D Mark Ice Storm, the unlimited test, 4,715. And Sun Spider, kind of not really impressive there. I thought it could do a little bit better, but 1,410. And that's where lower numbers are better. And the better phones score in the 400s to the 600s. And phones two years ago scored closer to 2,000. So how about the camera on this? Well, one thing that's a little bit strange is are really kind of pretty more blue than anything else. Turquoisey moto looks more green on the screen here. Uh, but big viewfinder here. Now, HTC believes in really not mucking up the UI much. Honestly, I would wish they would, might show a little bit more of stuff that you could do. Like if you want to switch to video mode, usually you have a quick toggle to switch to video or to switch front and rear cameras. Here, you're going to have to hit this button right here. Choose camera, video, or selfie, i.e. use the front camera. If you want to get to more settings, you tap down here, and we've got ISO, EV, auto white balance, a bunch of neat effects here with visual indicators of what they do. I always like that so people really get an idea of what it is they're signing up for. Vintage warm right there. We can go country, whatever that means. Country actually looks, well, more blue. Isn't that funny? We can go back to absolutely normal. And if you tap here on settings, you've got a couple more settings to work with. And you have quick access to your pictures that you've taken in your videos and flash control right there. Focusing speeds are generally not too bad on this, even in low light. Uh, the, the camera does have that usual HTC problem. And let's take a look at our gallery right here. I'm not particularly interested in the wonderful picture, but uh, notice the dynamic range issue right here. Now, our poor Buddha, his base is all whited out. In real life, it certainly didn't look like that. We, we get pretty good dark gradations right there. We get some nice detail. 13 megapixels captures a lot of image data. But there's also some significant whiteout. And this is something we see, you know, on all camera phones to a certain extent, but HTC more so, unfortunately, there. Again, on our flower right here, you can see that it whited out. It also had a little failure to focus there. Some focus can be a little hit or miss on this. It focuses quickly, but it doesn't always focus correctly. Now, this picture is absolutely gorgeous. It didn't white out the flower at all. There's nice color here. I'd like to see a little bit more sharpness on these petals and stuff, but I think anybody would be pretty happy with the colors and the naturalness of this one. That is an example of another exposure failure different rows on the same bush, and we're back to having those whiteout problems. General scenes like this, if you're more of just, just take that general scene right there and, and not focus on any one thing in particular, it does quite well here. I, really nothing to complain about. The whites in the pool, there's actually still detail in the, in the lighter zones right there. That's pretty good stuff. And for video, this can shoot 720p or 1080p video. Now, low life performance, since this doesn't have the ultra pixel, the big sensor and pixels inside, we didn't expect as much of it. But this is actually taken indoors in fairly low light. And it looks pretty good. In fact, it looks very good. So we have a little kitty moment there. Lots of detail, actually. Not a whole lot of noise or grain. Not too much motion tearing, anything of that. Look at that vicious cat. Now you know I always have cuts in my hand. So that's the camera, the rear camera, on the HTC One Remix. Honestly, between this and the HTC One MA, I'll take more pixels. So I'm, I'm actually pretty happy with this camera. The HTC One Remix is a global phone. That means it works on Verizon's CDMA network with EBDO Reve 3G and their LTE bands, and it also works at GSM and UMTS HSPA for overseas it's quad bands, so it's a world traveler as well. Pretty convenient there. Now, in terms of the, the UI, we're not going to spend a lot of time on that because this is pretty much the HTC One M8 all over again. And for those of you who watch the HTC One Mini 2 reviews that are available, same thing. We've got our screens now. Because this is a Verizon phone, we have Verizon bloatware and a lot of Amazon bloatware. Happily, we can get rid of things like this widget right here by just dragging it up to remove. So you've got all sorts of Amazon applications on here. We have a whole grouping of Amazon apps right there. We have a group of Verizon applications right there. So they're all tidied away in folders, at least, so they won't annoy you too much instead of turning on the phone, seeing a million icons, and thinking, what the heck are those all for? 
This does have an HTC Zoe icon, but right now you'll see it's checked for updates. It is coming soon. So not there yet for those of you who like the Zoe feature. It is obviously supposed to be coming soon. We check, we did check for updates. Not available right there yet. And for those of you who don't know what Zoe is, it takes a compendium of pictures that you've taken and gives you a couple of soundtracks to choose from and creates kind of a little moving picture, a nice little video out of that. We have Blink Feed right here, which is a great way to pick up the news. You know, at first Blink Feed didn't throw me too much, but it's become very customizable and the UI is really nice. You can choose from a variety of news sources right here and read articles and keep up to date on things using Blink Feed. If you don't like Blink Feed, you can hide it away and make it go away, but I think a lot of people probably, once they try it, decide that they like it. And in terms of the app drawer, this is HTC's usual treatment. It's the up and down, side to side. You can change the grid alignment, how many icons you see on the grid, that sort of thing. You can hide icons if you want. Otherwise, it's pretty much the same old stuff. We get to our quick settings and full settings right here. So there's a lot of stuff at your fingertips. If you want to get to them all, this is what they do. It's a fairly straightforward up and down thing. It's not as busy as, say, Samsung and LG's version of settings. So pretty clean, pretty light UI. Always enjoy HTC Sense 6. It's a light handed treatment of Android. It doesn't bog things down a lot or add a bazillion features that you probably aren't going to use anyway. So now we'll check out the boom sound speakers so you can hear them and we'll play one of our own videos. And by the way, this is what the on-screen keyboard looks like. Again, I generally enjoy HTC's treatment of the keyboard. You can load a third party one if you want, but you've got the press and hold to get alternate characters and numbers. Pretty standard stuff. We're almost at max now with our volume. This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is our full Samsung Galaxy S5 review. For those of you who like things short and sweet, we have a nine-minute quick look video review. This is looks just fine, but the thing is, it sounds a bit more like you're listening to an ultrabook or a, t a larger tablet rather than listening to a phone. It doesn't sound so tinny. So that's what the Boom Sound speakers get you—that stereo sound built in right here. So it's easy enough to like the HTC One Remix, although I'm a little concerned about the LTE reception. Maybe that's just our particular unit. I hope so. The thing is, it's a crowded space right now, especially with Verizon discounting the M8 itself, and the M8 not being physically much larger, but having way better specs in most respect, respects. But you know, one thing I would say is the camera, I might actually go with the 13 megapixel rather than the, the ultra pixel camera on the M8. Anyway, a lot of competition, $49 or less, and you can get things like the Moto X. You can look at the LG Vista if you want a phablet. I, I'm assuming if you're looking at this, it's probably because you want something smaller, not just more affordable, because $50 over two years, if you're still going for the traditional contract, really isn't all as meaningful as what you're paying for service over time. So if you're looking for a smaller phone, also this one is not real teeny as small phones go too, because HTC uses their nice big metal chassis. You got the boom sound speakers right here. It's, it's a hard phone to peg. I think in the end, this is for those of you who are looking for a classy piece of hardware. You don't want to be too, too big. You certainly don't want a phablet. You don't need the latest processor because honestly, the Snapdragon 400 is pretty darn adequate and you want a nice traditional, lots of megapixels camera. So that's the HTC One Remix, again, available now on Verizon Wireless in the United States. $49 on contract, so pretty affordable. $450 without contract, not quite as affordable, but if you're looking for a manageable size phone, a little on the bigger side of manageable, size phone though, but with a really classy design, obviously that's what the Remix offers. Otherwise, for $99, you can actually get the HTC One M8. If you don't mind a bigger phone, you get a lot higher end specs. And really, the HTC One Remix has a challenge here facing things like the Moto X that's very affordable versus the old M8, which is discounted on Verizon right now, but only to know which size and which set of features is worth it to you. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to visit our website for the full written review, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.